Good evening, everybody. I hope you are having a wonderful weekend. And I'm waiting for Lily Kane to come on so we can talk for a little while this evening. And listen, I don't know what's going on with my hair, but the biggest problem with carnivore is that my hair grows too fast. Who feels me there? Like, I can't keep it short because it just grows so fast. Like, I have to have it cut every two weeks. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, like I said, I hope everybody's having a great weekend. And um, we're going to talk to Lily Kane today. We're going to talk about um, eating habits and overeating and undereating and all things carnivore. So we'll wait for her to jump on here. Let me check and see. Let's see. She's not on yet. We'll find her here in just a minute. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to type those in the question box. The question box is right here, right there. It's got a little, uh, like a comment icon with a question mark in the middle. That's the best place to ask questions because they stay on the screen like that. And that makes it a lot easier to see them. I've had baby hairs my whole life. They're finally growing and I look like I'm growing a whole new head of hair, right? That's how my hair was. I had lost a ton of hair from COVID from 2020, from December of 2020. And um, as it started to come back in, I had all these little ones that didn't like match the rest of my hair. And then my older hair, the longer hair, I mean, it was pretty long. It was like down to here. The longer hair was just like um, really bristly and uh, just wouldn't do anything. Like I had actually naturally fairly curly hair, couldn't get it to do anything. It just like, it was just freezy everywhere. It was just a mess. And so I finally just decided that I was having it cut off so that my older, longer hair could, you know, what was cut off, it would kind of blend in with the newer hair that was coming in so healthy and thick. I had lost so much hair, but um, I like it shorter. It's fine. I kind of wish I had it, you know, long again, but um, I started to let it grow out like maybe last month and um, decided to cut it again because I had COVID again in July and I'm losing a lot of hair again. And so I just kind of hated to like go through the process of letting it grow out only to realize that I'm going to have the same problem I had last time. So I'll keep it short for a little while. have to have it cut way more often, but that's fine. So let's see. Still waiting for Lily. Let's see. I hope I got the time right. That's the downside to all these different time zones. I'm pretty sure I got the time right. Let's see. Anybody else has any questions? Uh, Maddie, it's so crazy. COVID dried out your hair. Yeah, made you lose a lot. Yeah. Let's see. There she, oh, there she is. There we are. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you, thank you. Let's see. She should be coming. She's coming. There you are. Yes, you got the time right. I was just <laughs> hitting a request a million times. You know how that is when you're trying to join. You're like, um... I know, and it's such a hassle. Like that button doesn't work very well. There ought to be a better way. If you hadn't joined, I was gonna, um, I was gonna go ahead and send you uh, um, an invitation because sometimes that works a little bit better if you send the invitation instead. Well, so we're good to go. go. Yay! I, I would really started to get worried that I had the time wrong. <laughs> you know how that is when everybody has different time zones. It's so confusing, and so I'm always saying yep. to people, just remember what your time zone is, so we can figure this out because it's so crazy. You hate to get it wrong. So <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, so nice to talk to you. So I know probably everybody knows who you are, but just to kind of get the ball rolling here, let's talk about, um, and this will be more of a conversation than an interview. I want us to, you know, to both kind of get to know each other. That's kind of my goal with these is to, um, and you're actually my second guest. I had Joey on, um, Joey Schwartz, but we, um, we tried to do a live and he didn't have a very good signal. So we ended up doing, uh, we ended up just recording it with Zoom and I posted part of it, but you know, you, um, Instagram won't let you post the whole thing anymore, which is, you can get like four minutes and then it just kind of cuts it off. So I'll have to put it on my YouTube channel. But um, so you're my, you're my second guest as an official Real Talk uh, meeting, whatever. Um, so I'm so excited that we get to talk to each other. Um, so if you'll just start and explain how this happened for you. Like, cause for people who aren't carnivores yet, it's such an odd thing. Like I was telling somebody the other day who didn't know, and I was surprised cause I wear my carnivore revolution shirt all the time. I feel like everybody that I see on a regular basis knows, but it turns out they don't. Um, and so people kind of think it's odd. So let's talk about like what brought you here and how that happened. Sure. And I'm super excited to chat with you too. And thanks for having me. Um, I first, moved into this way of eating from 
I was a track and field athlete in college and I ate whatever I wanted and got to get away with it for a long time. And once I stopped working out, I said, that's it. I'm done working out now that I've done eight years at that point of hurtling and jumping and sprinting and my knees were in a lot of pain. Sure. So I was like, I'm never running again. I actually still haven't ever run, ran since then. But um, <laughs> I said I wasn't going, going to work out either. And slowly, um, I was in denial that I was gaining weight. I really never even thought about that until afterwards when I lost weight. I was like, what? I had weight to lose. Um, but mostly I just was in so much joint pain. That was my biggest thing. And I had a lot of mood swings, irritability, incredibly painful menstrual cycles. Um, but I didn't actually get into eating healthy because of any of those things. I mainly moved into this because my fiance, when I first met him, we have an age gap. So he's nine years older than me. And at that point, when I met him, I was 22. So lucky for me, when I was 22, I started eating low carb. And that was just because he, um, when I met him, he didn't have cookies and pizza and soda and alcohol and chips and stuff like that. So I would have to bring it over to his house and leave the Costco Toll House cookie dough jar in the freezer. So that way I would have, it was like BYOS, bring your own sugar at his place. And um, eventually it just got to the point where when you're eating sugar by yourself, it just kind of like, you know, most people now, we feel like the weirdo's not having sugar, but when you're the only one in the room who's eating it, then you kind of like, you can't help but judge yourself. And I think that that's why like with people within this space too, if you ever have family or friends who are like, in a way feeling awkward or weird that you're eating more meat based, or even if you're eating keto, that they would feel weird, not because you are the weirdo, but because they're judging themselves or reflecting at least on their own decisions. And um, so that was what happened is I was inspired by him and that he was just like eating healthy. And I didn't even know I was eating low carb. It was just today we're not having rice, tomorrow we're not having bread. And eventually, um, because I was able to sneak in some peanut butter pancakes and some paninis and some quesadillas here and there, his health was starting to get um, worse. And so he's had ulcerative colitis, leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, gout, like all, like he's had a whole list of different autoimmune conditions where he, oh. uh, had already eaten a ketogenic diet prior to meeting me, found mm -hmm. so much healing and success when he did it that way, that when his health was declining eating the Lily Kane pizza diet, he said he was going to go back to eating keto. And I just thought that that meant like temporarily, or we're just not going to have the burrito today. And <laughs> so that, but I honestly started eating keto purely because he had always said when he ate a ketogenic diet that his dreams were so vivid and fun and adventurous. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, that keto diet sure sounds like fun. I'm going to do keto for fun. Yeah. Awesome. And then his, um, he still was noticing some like reactions from having certain vegetables. So slowly he was like, I'm going to remove the cauliflower. I'm not going to have any more broccoli. And just slowly he was tapering back on the vegetables. I thought this isn't fair. Right. How do I have to have all these vegetables? And then I just moved into it too. And he showed yeah. me Dr. Ken Berry's um, video where he eats. He says, if you just have beef, bacon, butter, liver, eggs, and sardines, you can get all the vitamins and minerals you need from just those six foods. And I'm a minimalist. So I yeah. really gravitated towards the idea of making my life more simple, more easy. And I was pretty sick and tired of making cauliflower wraps, cauliflower rice, cauliflower toast, cauliflower, cauliflower that I started eating the six foods. And then the story continues. Yeah, I was actually gonna mention the being a minimalist thing, because I did wonder if there was kind of a connection there, like at some point it drew you in even more than you already were because of the minimalist kind of mentality there. Yeah, well, so even we had like seasonings in the cupboards and it was, we finished the seasoning and we're like, oh man, if we have to buy another one, it's going to take us about a couple months to go through it. Do we really want to make that commitment and have another seasoning? So it was just, it's so freeing to look in your fridge and everything's organized, everything's yeah. nice. And granted when I initially I did just eat six foods, yeah. um, but now I don't do that anymore because I like having lamb and bison and elk and having more variety of different kinds of meats. Um, so that, yeah. <laughs> so recently you added some fruit back in I and mean, when I saw your video about that but let's talk about that just for a minute about what happened when you did that and what that's like because I have to say and I feel like I'm a pretty strict carnivore now the one thing that I have sometimes that I know is a carnivore I probably shouldn't um, but the one thing I feel like it's the one thing I think it is um, is I use a little bit of um, the of a natural buffalo wing sauce on my wings wings are one of those things for me where I grew up eating them, like we would go to 
I, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale and we would go to this place and it was like this big happy hour thing. They were 10 cent wings. It was like this, it was huge. I even remember the name of the place. I remember what the wings felt like. I remember what they tasted like. And I cut those out for goodness, probably 20 years or 25 years, you know, because they were bad for me because they're fried and because the skin has so much fat in it. And so I think for me, uh, wings became a thing for me when I started carnivore because it was just, um, it brought me back to when I was a kid and when I could eat whatever I wanted. And, and the wings, they just like, it's almost like a comfort thing for me. And so I make them like once every two weeks, that's probably the one thing that I have maybe once every two weeks. And then of course they last three or four days because I make a bunch of them. Yeah, Oakland Park Boulevard. Yes, wings and things. Somebody knows where I'm from. Yes. Um, and so that's probably the one thing. But I have to admit, my daughter keeps like little cups of um, avocado in the refrigerator. You know, those mm -hmm. ones that don't go bad, you can peel it off. Mm -hmm. And every now and then I look at that and I think, I would like some avocado with some salt on it. You know, like as a carnivore for me, um, I have porosmia, which is a post-COVID issue where things taste and smell rotten. Mm -hmm. It's been since March of, of 2021. So I can't eat any cold meats at all. Like when I pull them out of the refrigerator to heat them up, sometimes I almost gag because it smells so bad. There's this weird chemical reaction where the, I, don't, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it's still really, really bad. So I can't eat anything cold. So I think part of what I miss is something cold. Does that make sense? Like somebody asked me the other day, don't you miss salad? And I was like, no, I don't miss the salad but I might miss something cold and crunchy, but, but not ice. You know what I mean? Like I might miss eating something cold like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I think if I was going to have something, it would probably be a cold avocado with some salt on it if I was going to have a fruit. But let's talk about, I got sidetracked there. Let's talk about, um, about you and what happened when you added the fruit back in. Yeah, I'm going to go sidetrack too and talk about something. I Let's also go. had wings and things and wings and things was my favorite place. It, I, I mean, I'm from San Diego. So we had wings yep. and things and it was every year for my birthday. Like that's where I wanted to go. Get me the hottest, yes. spiciest wings, yes. which it was like a thing where I just wanted to like, I don't know why the spiciness, it was like a thing, but like always yep. forgot that coming out part was not the fun part, but the coming in part was fun. So good. <laughs> um, and then as far as the fruit experiment, so I guess essentially I was, eating those six foods. And then it got to a point where I started posting my videos on YouTube because I was eating my diet, minding my own business. I thought I was eating a keto diet the whole time. I didn't even know there was a word for it. And um, I started making content and people would leave comments like, well, why can't you have seasonings? Are you allowed to have coffee? Is it okay if you can have some blueberries? And questions like that, where it started making me realize like, I'm lucky that I'm not someone who has a, a huge autoimmune condition or mental health or binge eating and things like that, where I still want to be a role model today for people who are my age or younger or older, who they don't have to eat a strict carnivore diet to be healthy. Right. And my whole thing is like, I really want to encourage people to just have less processed foods, yeah. less sugar, because when I say like carnivore, it's like intimidating to the majority of people who would never try it. Yeah. So anyway, I started adding in things like grilled onions, grilled carrots, or cooked carrots, celery, potatoes, um, blueberries. And I, I, did, I did some vegetables more than the fruit. And then I just like, like okay, I don't really want to make vegetables. Yeah. I don't really care to have any of these things. Not that I'm noticing any negatives per se, but just I, it's, it just comes and it comes and goes. It gets for me like people, when I get trapped, I feel like sometimes where I'm put in a box, like you can't have seasonings. I'm like, yeah. I'm an adult, I could have this and I wanted to show that for people. So yeah. then I, we went on vacation last year and we got, we had some plums and peaches or plums and nectarines, which was super fun for us to like have fruit that I hadn't had in over a year. Yeah. And so then we just kept having fruit and just by fruit, I mean blueberries because no. uh, it was the only organic wild blue, uh, fruit we had in our grocery stores. And then that, which always seemed fine to have the blueberries, but eventually they got bland and boring and I was just kind of over it. And then of course, everyone hears about Paul Saldino, fruit, 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 have your fruit. And I just thought it would be fun, especially in the summertime, there were so many different options for fruits and things to see, okay, let's put this to the test. Let's yeah. really see. And um, I just found 
of course, when anybody reintroduces a food for the first time, whatever, like even if I have pork and I hadn't had pork in a long time, I will still have some sort of reaction because our gut buddies are just not used to having those yeah. things. So initially when I had like, for example, my first fruit was the watermelon, which is like a pretty hard fruit to start with. You could have started with like yeah. a gentler one. Um, right. I had some diarrhea for like a few days with the, with the watermelon, but then eventually it went away. Avocado, same thing. I broke out into a rash on the side of my um, on the side of my body, but that went away after a few days. And um, mainly, like fruit is amazing. It tastes so great, but I, for me, if I have too much of it, my scalp will break out and I'll have more dandruff and flakiness and yeah. irritation and itchiness, which is like. I would rather yeah. have dandruff than have itchiness. I can't tell you how many times scratching the back of my head drives me crazy. Oh, and yeah. I feel like it might give me a bald spot if I keep scratching the way I'm scratching. Right. Yeah. So overall for me, fruit tastes amazing. I love it, of course, but also bacon tastes amazing. Ribeye just tastes amazing. And other things that don't cause me to have just like, at least for me, the biggest con with fruit is just my scalp. So other than that though. Well, and that's caused by the inflammation, which is caused by the sugar. Um, we yeah. have a few questions. Somebody's talking about how watermelon is super sugar, and that's true. It's one of the sugariest um, mm -hmm. things. And then um, Ketovore Chronicle says she doesn't do well. I think it's she. I can't see. Um, doesn't do well with um, pork or chicken. And I have to say, I did say this to Jess this morning, that um, chicken is not my friend. Um, the few times that I had the chicken wings in the last couple of weeks, those were the days where my glucose went up and my ketones came down, even though I was... Uh, dipping them in butter, you know, I thought I was adding enough fat. And mm -hmm. I just recently started checking my glucose and my ketones about three weeks ago, and I'm down eight pounds by making sure by the foods that I'm eating that my fat is higher and that my protein is lower. Um, so I am loving it. I feel good. I'm full all the time. Not everybody feels that way. Jess doesn't really like it. But um, but I do. I did notice those days that I had the chicken, and that was super disappointing to me. So I have to be prepared on the days that I'm going to have the wings to know that. Uh, that the scale is not going to go down for the next couple of days. I have to be okay with that. So that's kind of a, it's going to be like a consolation. Like I'm going to have to say, okay, I'm going to have to make that choice. Like, is that okay? Um, but losing the eight pounds was great because now I'm only seven pounds for my goal today, which is super exciting. Thanks. And I'm not even sure that my goal is what it was before. You know what I mean? Like, um, and you probably, you probably would agree. I, my body is not the same as it was last time I weighed this amount. Like it just is not, I can wear things now that I couldn't wear at this weight several years ago which is really interesting. It's just, you know, your body composition just changes mm -hmm. with carnivore. Don't you agree? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like heavy on the weights and stuff. Your, your composition just changes. Yeah, I, I was 115. <laughs> I know it's not that, that heavy, but I was 115 pounds and I'm 115 pounds, but just the, the way in which my face yes. hold, held a lot more water, people yes. would say, you lost weight. And I was like, I don't lose any weight, but it was mostly from the water weight being flushed out and even like, the bloat stomach and things like that. Yeah, and the inflammation and stuff. Um, somebody's asking where we both live. You wanna say where you live first? Currently, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that's where you were. So I'm in, I'm in Southwest Virginia. Um, but so let's talk about like macros and stuff. You don't count anything right now, right? I don't, but because I get asked so many times, you know, eventually you just have to figure it out. Um, yeah. But I would say I probably eat about 180 to 190 grams of protein and 180 to 190 grams of fat. So I eat so a like, lot. Like a one-to-one -one ratio there. Yeah, I, I've always done one-to-one -one since I've been doing carnivore because if I do too much fat, then I'll definitely have diarrhea. And I think I can absolutely slowly reintroduce fat. If you just add a little bit over time, then eventually yeah. that wouldn't be the case. Um, but I don't know, I'm fine with eating a lot of protein. It's really hard for me. It's more that I don't think it's necessary for myself, at least like I've wanted the CGM too, to know yep. about my blood sugars. But if I eat butter, which I eat butter with every meal, I yeah. don't need to be eating 10 pounds of butter. I can right. have just one tablespoon of butter per meal. So it's like how yep. many more vitamins and minerals am I really going to be getting by adding more of that butter? Because for me, yep. yes, I can be eating other sources of fat like tallow or ghee or like duck fat, but I don't know, yeah. butter is just so easy and affordable and it tastes yeah. really great. And then I also know that I'm already eating the fattiest meats I can. So instead of having right. tilapia, I'm having salmon, instead of having chicken breast, chicken thighs, instead of yeah. the strip, having the ribeye. So I'm already eating the fattiest cuts. Now I just yeah. need to add the, that extra fat. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't think that if I keep adding loads and it would have to be me just adding more and more fat to get that fat higher because right. I can't be adding more and more meat. It's gonna keep increasing my protein. <laughs> Right. 
Yeah, and, and I have found that too. And um, and I wasn't really counting. And I gained um, almost 20 pounds in the first eight months of doing carnivore by under eating. So that's something I want to talk to you about too. Wow. Um, by under eating and fasting too much. I was fasting like three full days a week. And on my eating days, I was only eating like one small meal. But because I come from a history of chronic dieting, chronic under eating, and, um, and like I didn't know when I was full and I didn't know when I was hungry, so those two hamburger patties seemed like enough to me. And yeah. I would eat those at like one o'clock and at four or five, I just wasn't hungry. So I would say, well, I'll just carry this on over into my 36 hour fast and make it a 40 hour fast. And I got into the habit of doing that. And it just was this endless cycle of under eating. Okay. Um, I just got into this cycle of the under eating and fasting and um, my body didn't like it at all. And I put on quite a bit of weight from it. Um, so. I wanted, so then, yeah, so what I was going to say is, so then um, at about eight months in, I realized how much I was eating, that I was eating like 800 calories a day on the days that I was eating. And I was like, whoa, like, because everybody just kept saying, don't track. You don't have to track anything on carnivore. Eat when hungry until full. And I did that for eight months and put on almost 20 pounds. And as soon as I raised what I was eating and quit fasting, my weight stabilized and I maintained for about four months. And then I was able to decrease it gradually to where I can now lose weight. And now I'm down. I guess it's like 27 pounds since May. Um, and eight of that was within the last three weeks when I raised my fat. So at that point, I still wasn't really counting, but I knew my glucose was um, a little bit high and that my protein was a little bit low from some blood work I had done, which seems so odd to me with zero carbs and mostly eating fat and protein. Um, and so I was checking my glucose at home and then I saw Kelly posting all the stuff she's posting about also checking your ketones so I got the monitor and started checking both of those and realized that it was too much protein for me to be able to lose weight at a, you know, at a quicker, it's a still a healthy rate, but it's a quicker rate. Um, Cause I would like the scale would sit still for a month, nothing would happen. And I was like, so frustrated with it because I was like, I thought I was doing this right. I'm eating more, you know, this was working last month. Why is it working this month? And so I finally got that figured out. And I do think that it's in part to checking the ketones and glucose so that I know those numbers, like if you're never checking anything, you know, if people say throw out your scale, don't track your food, don't check your glucose and your ketones. If you're not tracking anything at all, you're not checking anything. How do you tweak it when there's something wrong? You know, how do you, how do you fix that if you're not checking anything at all? So I'm not one to say throw out your scale, don't check anything, don't track your food. I say for 60 days, don't do anything. Eat three meals a day. Don't fast, like intentionally do not fast because it's so easy to get full with one meal and then you're under eating like I did. So I'm like pretty intentional, be very intentional about those three meals, make sure you get the food in. Um, and I know that you had a little bit of an issue there for a while where you were under eating. And um, I saw that video too, and I thought it was a great video. So let's tell everybody how that worked for you because you were eating a lot less than you should have been and mm -hmm. you fixed it and managed to do it without gaining weight. And I think that's one of the things that scares so many women especially well, I can't eat more than 1200 calories a day or I'll gain weight or I'm only eating 900 calories a day. But if I increase my calories, I gain weight. And my heart just goes out to those people because I know what that feels like to feel like you can't eat more when really it's just that you have to do it. There's, you can do it, you know, scientifically so that you don't gain that weight. And people are so scared of that. You're, you're, it's music to my ears, everything you're saying. <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to ask you too, because you said that you were under eating, you gained weight, and then you were eating more and you kind of plateaued or you weren't having that weight gain. What was it that you did that made the weight loss? Because you said that you, were, you started limit having less. Does that mean less food or what, what was it that made you yeah. then lose the weight? Yeah. So at that point, um, I had raised my calories kind of gradually. Like as soon as I started eating more, I stopped losing. But eventually I raised them up to something like 2,500 calories a day, maybe a little bit more. And I was able to maintain like that. It might even have been more like once I kind of got it, I quit tracking because um, because of my binge eating in the past and my disordered eating and my eating disorders. I have a hard time with things like tracking and weighing my food because it's kind of like fasting for me. If well, if 18 hours is good, then 24 hours must be better. Well, if 24 hours is good, then 48 hours must be better. I'm an all or nothing kind of person. Uh -huh. And so for me, um, I, I couldn't keep tracking. So I knew about how much I was eating at that point. I kind of got a handle on what being hungry and being full felt like at that point. So I didn't really have to track. So I didn't track for a while there after I figured it out. Uh, but then I kind of lowered it back down to 
I don't know, 22, 2300 calories maybe. And that's when I started losing. It was like, I had to make my body trust me again. I had to eat that 25 or 26 mm -hmm. or 2700 calories a day. Mm -hmm. So my body would say, oh, okay, there's not a famine coming. Okay, we'll let it go now, you know? And so many people don't understand that, especially women have a hard time. So then you can stay at that 2200 and you were losing weight the whole time. You didn't have to then tweak it again to 22 or 22,000 yep. to then 1800. You just 22 the whole time. It was yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's perfect. I know. Um, <laughs> that's, and that's exactly what I would say to somebody too, is that I know it's like super scary and that's like the biggest thing. I mean, I will tell you right now, anybody, I, I have coaching clients. I have coaching calls. I will tell you the same thing. So don't book a call. This is the, this is what I would tell you if you booked a call just eat more food, you're under eating. Because 95% of people who have booked a call, I don't think I've ever had somebody who was actually eating enough food. I've always, I mean, I don't want to say always, but we're going to say 95% have been yeah. under eating. And so yeah, if you're not seeing results and you're contacting somebody to help you, whatever you're doing, it's not working. So do the opposite. Eat more. <laughs> um, and it seems yeah, so counterintuitive. Yeah, I've had people come to me and say, I just don't understand. I'm sure I'm eating too much. I don't understand. And I have said, okay, tell me what you ate today. And they tell me, and it's literally six or 700 calories. And I say, is this a typical day for you? And they say, yes. And I'm like, that's why you can't lose weight. And then they say, well, and I walked five miles today. So now your body thinks you ate a hundred calories today. Yeah. What would you do if you were your body, if you were your body? right? You would just hold on to everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had a, a young lady, she was eating when she first came to me, she was having like very healthy keto-ish diet where she was having like lots of meat plus maybe some broccoli and maybe dark chocolate. And that was her thing. But, and I, she, over the course of time, she just kept removing more and more foods. I'm going to remove the dark chocolate. I'm going to remove the broccoli. I'm going to remove the chicken. I'm going to remove the pork. Now I'm just eating beef only and I'm not losing weight. And I said, well, you were having more success with what you were doing the first time. Stricter right. does not necessarily mean better. Yeah. And like you were saying, same thing. Like if 18 hour fast is good, then 24 hour, 48 hour is even better. So um, right. I definitely don't think that necessarily, depending on the person, of course, some people have autoimmune responses to dairy, to eggs, right. to chicken, things like that. Then of course, and I'm not saying like, that's a price to everybody, but for the most part, I would say that stricter doesn't mean better and the more variety you can get in. Um, yeah. I think mostly for the fact, especially with weight loss, the the biggest thing with weight loss is sustainability because you're not going to re reach your weight loss goal in a week or in a month. So what is it that you're eating? If you're eating what your, yeah. your food and you're super bored or you're over it or you're disgusted by it, we got to add in some more variety of different kinds of animals or whatever it is that's going to work with um, your lifestyle. Yeah. But um, yeah, for myself, I was under eating completely unintentionally because I was just eating until I was comfortably full, which I think is like, now I'm gonna make a video on like terrible carnivore advice because I yeah. think that like, it makes, it's a lot of things we just want the simple answer and the easy thing. And so as much as it's like, oh, just like, don't even worry about it, just eat till you're comfortably full. And I think that is really great advice because people should get into that diet culture and that mindset of like, I need to track. But at the same time, how, like you said, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you are? So yeah. track it for, I mean, Oh, I think just at least a week yeah. just to see on, on average, where am I at? And then, um, yeah, so it's, I didn't never track my calories in my life. And somebody had commented on my video, you're only eating 1200 calories. No wonder why this girl's thin. And I'm like, what? I'm eating 1200 calories. Is that a lot? Right. Is that a little, <laughs> um, see, by your reaction, it's probably not too much. <laughs> and, uh, so then just very gradually, I just started adding in more and more food. So some people, they, you know, another common question is, well, how do I have more food? And I would say, don't go from today I'm eating 600 or 1200 to tomorrow I'm eating 3000. It's okay, tomorrow I'm just gonna have one more bite of butter, one more ounce of chicken, one more piece of beef, something yeah. small. Mm -hmm. And then just do that for a week or a month or however long until you're ready to have another piece of food because and add on another ounce of chicken or another bite of beef. Yeah. Because if you go from that 1200, I was full. And like you said, you were full, you were eating till you were comfortably full. But then it gets to the point where tomorrow for me to add in another thousand calories i'm just going to be so completely stuffed my stomach's yeah. going to hurt i'm not going to sleep great i'm going to be super hot that it, i would just gradually increase the calories versus try to make this leap over time um but then yeah i didn't gain any weight i stayed the same weight in fact i built, built some muscle at the time too because when you give yourself more food more fuel you can grow your body build your body and have the energy to go and exercise to have a good night's sleep things like That's that right. yeah and if you if you do it overnight you are going to gain weight because what you do is you lower your metabolism every right. Every week, you know, like for instance, somebody will say, oh, well, you know, 1400 calories, I stopped losing weight. So I lowered it to 1200 calories, yep. 1200. And you're like, well, I must need a thousand calories to lose weight. So, um, 
So, so you have to do it gradually because you're increasing your metabolism as you do that too. And the other thing I wanted to say is um, the advice about eating when hungry until full. I do agree that for most people, that's a decent advice. For your average uh, person coming from the sad diet who their only problem is, let's say they're addicted to carbs. For those people, if they, once they get rid of the carbs, they're already in the home stretch. Like you eliminate all those processed foods, you are already doing better than 99% of Americans. Mm -hmm. But it's so important to um, make sure that you are that you are eating enough because this diet keeps you, this way of eating, this way of life keeps you so full. So for the average person that works, but for somebody like me who came from, like that should be one of the first questions, don't you agree? Like, so do you have a history of chronic dieting or chronic under eating? Cause that has happened to me before over the years. Like I've been on every diet you could think of. So I've done Weight Watchers, I've done all of the diets. And on every single one, there was one point in time where I would realize that I wasn't losing weight because I was under eating. And I was always, it was never a lot of weight, except we have four kids. And so with each of the four kids, I gained 80, 60, 50, and 40 pounds. It's a lot of weight for being pregnant, but I was always able to lose it fairly quickly. Of course, I was younger than I am now. Our youngest um, is turning 14 next week. So, so I've had a lot of time to figure things out and be on all different kinds of diets to try to lose that last 10 pounds. But there was always a point where I realized I was under eating. So I think it should always be, a huge question for a coach, or if you're just going to somebody for advice for the carnivore diet, um, one of the things that should be asked always is, are you a chronic dieter, a chronic under eater? Did you have any eating disorders? Um, do you feel like you know when you're hungry and when you're full? And I do think that 60 days in, if, if, if it sounds like they're not eating enough, it's time to track your food. It's time to track it. It's, trying to, it's time to see. And I use um, Card Manager. Do, what do you use on the occasion that you do count? Uh, my fiance, he was <laughs> for me, but he uses my fitness pal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. My, um, my daughter uses my fitness pal. My husband uses chronometer, which mm -hmm. is also a pretty good one. Um, but those are some good apps if you're, but, but again, if you are new to the carnivore diet, do not start tracking your food. Do not do that. You need yeah. three good nourishing meals every day to the point where you think you're eating too much because you're so used to eating cupcakes and honey buns and, you know, and all that stuff that just makes you want more. It's so easy to feel full on meat. You, you pretty much, you can't really overeat a ribeye. That just doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, you know? and, yeah. Well, my, my um, mother-in-law was just in town this past couple of, uh, of weeks and she, we would talk to her. She'd be like, so how much protein should I be eating? And we're like, oh, you know, I'm trying to aim to eat about, you know, maybe your ideal body weight, you know, something like, yeah. and she was like, oh, I easily do that each meal or every day. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> and we, 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 you know, so we were watching her while she, was here with us and we we're we we're making sure to feed her we're like all yeah. right here you go she's like this is a lot of food i know that's you know. what you need to be eating but when you're eating other kinds of foods that it's just uh not the same kind of satiation so it's just it is it is confusing and like i, I agreed with your point too about eating the three meals in a day too because when i first started eating carnivore i first started well it was keto at the time i was like i need to do intermittent fasting because that sounds yeah. like a lot of fun too i just want to challenge my yeah. body and train it that way and um, I did, did the two meals in a day, and that was at the time where I was eating the 1,200 calories, not realizing that it was so little. But because I was just so full eating at one whole meal, I have to eat all this food. Yep. So if you can split it up into three meals, then I think that's definitely a way where you can make sure that you're eating enough food. Because when you sit down to eat that big old meal, you're super stuffed. You don't even want to eat food. You don't want to look at food the rest of the day, and then you got to shove down another meal. So just I know. up can definitely help. I know. It's so hard. And so I get the apprehension in the beginning for people because I was there. I was there 16 months ago feeling like, how is this possible that I can eat all of this? And for me, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't all, you know, roses and dandelions for me. I was gaining weight, but I stuck with it because I believed, I, I mean, I was watching you almost right away, you and Kelly and Bella and, you know, Dr. Barry. I mean, I was watching your videos, watching everybody. I was like, but it works for them. This must, there, you know, there must be something to this. Um, and I stuck with it because I felt so good. And I think that's a huge thing is you have to, you can't just give it a week. You have to give it a couple of weeks. You really need 30 days for sure. Um, but you can't like just give it a week and then go out, you know, and binge with your friends and have, you know, some cocktails and have some spaghetti with some garlic bread. You can't do that on the carnivore diet because it just kind of sets you back to, you know, it's almost like hitting a reset button. And then you have to do, I mean, it's still better than eating carbs all week long but you do still have to go through a little bit of withdrawals again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and the other thing, like you were saying too, I, I always forget, like we don't go out to eat ever. We don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, yeah. uh, 
I, f I feel like it would be very difficult if I was living in a house where there was a lot of different options. Like if like my partner or if my kids or like if there were people in the house who I was living with who didn't have like just healthy foods, then it would be harder for me, yeah. I think. And I think that's probably the case with a lot of people too, is that they want to make that change for themselves, but their partner's not ready or their kids yeah. aren't doing it or the roommate. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really tough for people if they're living in it because it's really, yeah. I mean, even my mother-in-law, she was here, she had peanut butter. We had, our house had peanut butter and oatmeal and all these things that we don't ever have. And I was like, peanut right. butter, maybe I'll just have a little spoonful. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah, my, um, so none of my four kids are carnivore. My husband mostly is, I would say six and a half days of the week or 13 and a half days out of two weeks. And he's mostly, mostly carnivore, but um, it is hard. Um, but I don't know, I think because somebody was asking me, a friend that is trying to get started just asked me today because she's struggling. It's been three days, she's binged already once, you know, and I'm like, you're the only one that can, you have to decide that you want to feel better more than you want the cupcake or whatever you're mm -hmm. about to eat, that only you can do that. And I think for me, um, because I'm an all or nothing person, like I hope we're not triggering people talking about these things, but um, like when I bought, gluten, I, I've been gluten free for 10 years. So when I would buy gluten free Oreos for the house, I would buy two packs because I knew I was probably gonna eat a whole pack. I mean, that's just who I was. That was the weekend that I switched to carnivore was my birthday in 2021. And my girls, you want to talk about tough, my girls are, um, uh, well, they're 13, 15, they're having birthdays like right now. Um, so they're gonna be 14 and 16. But they have a gluten free baking business. They're on their fifth year at the farmer's market selling their baked goods. And let me tell you something, they make the best cupcake I've ever had. And um, so for my birthday last year, um, they said, you want us to make you some cupcakes? And I said, yes, double the recipe. That's where I was in life. I was like, there's only six of us. I was like, double the recipe. And I ate 20 cupcakes in 36 hours. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I'm not kidding. And that's who I was. And I woke up Monday morning and said, that's it. We went running and I was like, that's it. No more carbs for me. And I remember laying out in the sun on our porch, my birthday's in May. And I remember laying out in the sun on our porch when we got back from running and Googling it. Like, okay, so if I'm giving up, cause I didn't know what carnivore was, mm -hmm. but I was, I had been mostly on Weight Watchers, but that taste and smell issue that I have just made things so hard for me. And I was down to literally a handful of foods and it was like fresh burgers and everything else was sugar that I could eat. And I remember laying out on the porch like, okay, so if I can't eat fruits and vegetables because they smell rotten and I'm gonna give up all the carbohydrates and I'm basically just gonna eat, like there were a couple of cheeses I could eat. I was like, so what does this make me? And that's how I found carnivore. And, um, and it changed me in so many ways. Mentally, I'm a different person. Like I think part of it was um, the determination to stick with it. And um, I think like what I, what I told my friend is, you're the one that has to make the decision. But I think for me, that all or nothing mentality is what made me start and not stop. You know, like, and I'm not gonna say I didn't have anything. I did at Christmas time. Now I made completely carnivore friendly foods to take, um, but I did have one gluten-free roll because my mother-in-law makes them specially for me and I didn't have a heart to just not eat one. Um, but I was miserable. Like my stomach was three times the size when I got home that night, I couldn't believe it. And I don't bloat with carnivore ever. Like my stomach is still pretty much the same way in the evening as it is in the morning. So I don't have that problem normally. Um, and then there was, um, there was one other time, I think last summer where I had, you know, like something that I think was maybe something my girls made that I hadn't tasted before. And I just took one bite or something, but I think it's that all or nothing that made me make that decision and then just kind of stick with it and be like, no, but this is what I do now. Like, so I'm, and I posted this the other day, I'm not on the carnivore diet. I am a carnivore. And there is a difference there. You know, looking at it like it's a diet implies that it's temporary, I think. But looking at it as a way of life and saying, this is, this is what I am now. I am a carnivore. So I am not that person anymore. I'm not the person that walks through the kitchen and, you know, while the girls are making frosting, you know, dips my finger in it. Or I never do. I help them bake sometimes. Easy peasy for me. And I think it's that all or nothing that made me say, okay, I'm just not doing that anymore, you know? And I think that's so great that, like, I'm sure, well, on your YouTube videos, maybe I'm not sure if on your Instagram, but like there are so many different opinions. So yeah. no matter like, if, so like I'll make YouTube videos where I swear I just say like, I love you. And there'll be like, she raised her eyebrows too high. Her yeah. lips were moving. She heard her pitch was, so like we all have different opinions and I value yeah. all of that. Yeah. Um, so uh, for you, like for myself, I am on a carnivore diet. I am not carnivore. Like, I'm Lily really? King. So, but that's my personality type where if yeah. you tell me like, this is who you are. Like, I just can't feel that like limited trap feeling. And some people, like, they like, like, 
no, I need to know the rules. I'm an all enough person. Like, yeah. this is what I'm doing. And this is what I am for yeah. me. If, if I have to say like, this is me, it's just like, yeah. what? me is changing all the time. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. And yet I feel like the fact that I am a carnivore is what keeps me carnivore because like, if I gave myself that leeway, you know, it's like, it's like when I, when I'm sprinting, I don't run, like we still go running some mornings, my husband and I, but you know, I used to run three, four, five miles. Um, and now I'm just doing sprinting instead. So like, I'll walk out like a mile and a half. And as he's coming back, I'll turn around and start sprinting and meet him at the car. And, um, but when I was running or when I'm sprinting, I'll look like, I'll look at the tree, you know, far down on the trail and I'll say, I'm going to stop at that tree. Mm -hmm. But if I stop before that, every other single time I sprint, I will stop before. It's like, if I give myself, right. if I give myself right. that leeway. So for me, I think deciding that I am a carnivore is what keeps me carnivore. Because if I was um, somebody who went ahead and ate some blueberries, let's say, the blueberries wouldn't be enough. And that's part of my binge eating too. The yep. blueberries wouldn't be enough. They would trigger me. And I would definitely want something that was sweeter or I would want them every day. And yep. I would eat so many of them, we would go broke on blueberries <laughs> because they're so expensive now. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, that's why I think it's like so awesome to have conversations like these because yeah. for, for your mindset, you would never under, I mean, I'm sure you understand my kind of mindset yeah. and for my mindset, I don't understand your mindset, but it, right. then we talk about it. It's like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. Because I posted a video a couple days ago where I said that every piece of food has something of value to offer. So maybe yeah. that is, it's giving you vitamins and minerals. Maybe that other food is donuts. That's not giving any vitamins and minerals, but the value in it is that it has, it tastes good or the value in drinking alcohol is it may calm you down. Now those things I would, I don't drink, I don't eat, right. but, or eat donuts, but they, you, every food has a piece of value. And that was all I was trying to say is the message is that everything has some sort of value. It's just what to you is worth it. Is it worth it to you to have, yeah. you know, the mouth the pleasure of the donut right. or to have the vitamins and minerals of the steak. And somebody commented, wow, you're telling heroin addicts to have heroin by saying that donuts have taste good. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm just saying the value. I'm not saying that you have to eat them, but I guess right. like you said, even when we were talking just now, one of the things that you had said is that I hope we're not triggering anybody. And I don't right. even think about that, that saying yeah. just the word donut could make somebody want to go and right. eat a donut. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, but, but what you said is true. Every food does have value. If it didn't have value, you wouldn't eat it. And if the value was just, that you're addicted to the sugar or that it tastes good or it feels good in your mouth, that is still value, even if it's not the nutritional value of a ribeye and it's not, <laughs> but there, th but that is true. I mean, I hadn't really looked at it like that, but every food has value, even if it's just a value that you put on it, you right. know, your head because you want that donut. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a really interesting concept. I, I didn't see that video. I'll have to go watch it, but I was just going to say, I bet you got in trouble for that. <laughs> I bet you got a lot of comments. <laughs> Just, it was just, well, maybe more will come, but that yeah. one stuck out to me because, you know, I, the ones that, the ones that don't agree, those are the ones yeah. that stick out, but I appreciate those ones so much because it gives me a different perspective and gets to put me in somebody else's shoes because right. that's how we all are going to learn and grow is to, when we yeah. share and communicate like this, because otherwise we all just see and believe through our own experiences, but not, if I never experienced binge eating, then I'm not going to be able to know right. how that feels for somebody else too, so. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's, that's part of what made me want, sorry. Um, that's one of the things that made me kind of want to be a coach was just that, you know, a year in, I was still struggling and I just felt like, how come nobody knows what to tell me? How come nobody really can figure out, you know, how, and, and like, I talked to Kelly Hogan a lot at that time and still do now. And her problem was the opposite of mine. So when she started eating carnivore, um, she couldn't get enough food. So it never really occurred to her that people could be under eating and gaining weight at that point. Like, right. because for her, she was like, she was empty inside. And so she just ate and ate and ate and ate. Um, but for me, because I had been under eating for so many years, it just made it so much harder for me to know how much, you know, was an appropriate amount of food. So that's always what I tell people is, you know, after 60 days, let's check it and see, you know, and that way you can get an idea of what an appropriate amount of food for you looks like and feels like in your stomach, because looks like with your eyes and feels like in your stomach, because otherwise you have no way of knowing that. And people are like, well, what is an appropriate amount of food? And I'm like, well, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I uh, grew up, I grew up very low income. So we had just like 
macaroni and cheese and yeah. top ramen and just like I never realized that like I'm only five foot two. Hey, you know what? I think I know I could have been a little bit taller had I. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think I was under eating my whole entire life, and so. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, then for people, maybe if they have a history of under eating and then maybe not even know it, I didn't right. know I was six years old that I was under eating. It was just right. the amount of food that I was allowed to eat. Yeah. Um, that, that might be how people approach it differently. Cause I know even steak and butter gal, like she did not know under eat. She still to this day crushes me in food. I'm like, she, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a totally different, that's a totally different thing. You know, like you, it, it just helps, you know, like, it's just, it's a different target audience. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different people can help different people depending on what we've all been through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that makes a big difference. But, um, well, I think that's good. What do you think? That's great. It was super fun. It was a lot was said in this short amount of time. I know. And there are a lot, well, we both talk pretty fast too. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, there are a lot of questions. Um, but, let me see if I can just find a few. Um, the way to get your questions seen easier is there's like a little bubble at the bottom of the screen right there with a question mark in it. Um, and it's really helpful if you use that instead so that I can actually see the questions. Um, they're so far back. Somebody says it's life changing. It is uh, 20 plus years. Raw. Rare or raw meat, raw eggs and raw dairy. Um, give raw a try. Have you done raw? I will eat my organ meats raw, but other than that, I yeah. have not tried eating like raw ground beef or anything like that. Mostly yeah. just out of like, not, it just doesn't sound as, I don't, hey, if you're looking for something cold, there's your cold meat right there. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I want my meat warmer. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I was growing up and my mom would make, um, I don't remember if it was like meat sauce spaghetti or if it was meatloaf, but I remember she would season the meat really good and make eggs with it and stuff. And I, boy, I would eat a bunch of that. It just tastes, I can actually taste it now. It's like, even just thinking about it, it was so good. But now that I know what it is, I'm like, I'm a, um, I'm a really traditional meat kind of person. Like I can't eat, I don't think I could go to a restaurant and order like crocodile or duck. Like for me, it has to be like, it's chicken and beef and pork. Like I'm just, I'm that kind of person. I, I couldn't go hunting, you know, that's just not who I am. Um, and so maybe I'll get there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I could eat the meat raw now. Um, but then it was like garlic and onion salt in it and stuff. Um, and I still can't do garlic and onion because of that post COVID issue where things just smell horrible and who knows, they might even cause inflammation if I tried them, but I really have a hard time even being in the same room as garlic and onion. So, um, so I'm not sure that I could just eat the raw meat. I actually just made some meat for the kids. I should have put a little bit of salt on it and tried it. Maybe I'll try it. We'll see. Maybe I'll try some raw meat. Um, somebody says raw eggs blended with some raw heavy cream. Yes, I've been doing that. It's kind of like eggnog. It is so good. Um, I can only drink just a little bit of it at a time. Uh, it's just so filling for me. I do the raw egg yolks. Um, yeah. And I have raw milk, raw cheese. I don't think that counts as like what they're talking about. But yeah. Raw eggs, I've, I've done the egg yolks. I've tried doing yeah. a whole raw egg and I threw up the whites, so. I think I would too, the texture. And I, I think I did that at one point when everybody was doing that, like for weightlifting when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, but now like, and I do like my yolks mostly raw. I just, I'm a, like my eggs are just over easy just a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, but I could eat the runny yolk pretty good. Let's see. Uh, we store weight when we eat seed oils, just like mammals that hibernate. That's true. Seed oils are bad news. Um, somebody says, how many calories do you eat? Do you know how many calories you're eating now? Uh, probably 2,400. Yeah, I'm probably 2,200, but you're a lot more active than I am. I'm just kind of in a slump. We have our kids do volleyball and basketball, and I use that as my excuse. <laughs> I use that as my excuse to not get up early enough to do what I need to do, but I am back on it. We're going to be out. Of, we're going to uh, go on a little vacation. We can get back. I am right back on it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I need to. Let's see. Ribeye is our friend. Yeah, ribeye is my friend too. Same. Yeah. Uh, duck isn't a substitute for ruminant fat. Well, but it's still a cooking fat. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's still not a seed oil or a vegetable oil. So that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, um, people ask about like, bacon fat, like should you cook in bacon fat and things like that. I'm like, well, I'm not going to eat bacon fat, like spoonfuling it out into my mouth, but I'd cook in, in sure. butter. Yeah. yeah, me too. Now I do eat butter like that on occasion. Um, I keep a, a fork on my butter dish and I will walk through every now and then, you know, and just get a little bit. I don't do it as much now as I used to. Um, now I just end up adding it to my foods more than I was, but I would eat it. Um, I, bit, I bit into a brick of butter the other day. Uh, <laughs> 
I spit it out afterwards. I do not like butter by itself. I have butter every day, but I put it with my beef or with yeah. my chicken. But something about having it just plain, I was, I did it and then I spit it out and Bryce was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I can't do that. He was like, I thought you liked butter. I was like, I do, but I don't like it by itself. That is so funny. Um, I make bulletproof water. Have you seen me talk about that? Uh -uh. Um, I made, when I gave up coffee back in, it was either March or April, I heard Dr. Chafee talking about, that was like when he first started like doing a lot of videos and stuff. And I heard him talking about that last 5% can make 95% of the difference for most carnivores. And I was like, giving up the coffee. And besides it tasted rotten to me. It's one, of, it's one of the many things that still tastes and smells rotten to me. It's like a rotten skunk carcass that's on fire. That's what it is. That's what things smell and taste like. And so when I say I can't eat that because of my taste and smell issue, that's what I mean. It all has the same smell. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went ahead and gave up my coffee and um, I switched to like, I needed a substitute for it. And so I put like two tablespoons of butter and some hot water with a little bit of extra salt and put it in my Nutribullet and blend it up. And it turns into this like white frothy buttery drink. It is really good. Yesterday, I hadn't eaten enough and we were leaving for a volleyball game. And so I, put, I went ahead and put three tablespoons in it. It was even better because it's not, it's not straight butter. You know, it's blended with the hot water. And so blending it keeps it emulsified and keeps it from separating. So the butter doesn't just like flip to the top. Mm -hmm. um, but it has become a real staple for me. Um, and especially now that it's getting cold outside and I hate I hate it like, and so I don't really like fall because it's the prequel to winter, right? Like, I mean, the trees are pretty, but I know what's coming. So I'm basically cold and in a bad mood from like October until May. <laughs> I hate are you born, are you, where were you born and raised though? Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, okay, so that's why. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard. Um, okay, somebody says I've lost 50 pounds, but I wear all the same clothes and hardly lost any inches. Could it be inflammation? Well, it could, but that seems odd. I would say you're either overeating or undereating. What do you think? They said they lost 50 pounds? Yeah, they lost 50 pounds, but wear all the same clothes and hardly lost any inches. So no muscle gain. Like, how do you know that you lost 50? How did you lose 50 pounds, but That's... not lose 50 pounds in the same sense? Yeah, oh, um, her, I, she may not still be on. This was a while ago. Her username is PCOS and Bacon, so I wonder if it could be a PCOS thing, but... I've seen people with great results for PCOS. So I wonder yeah. if it's too much dairy or not eating enough or eating too much. Yep. Maybe it could be either anything of those. So if you're still on, go ahead and ask us. Otherwise, feel free to send one of us a message. Um, somebody else agrees with you about the one-to-one. -one. Oh, we have four questions in the question box. Let's see. People listened. Okay. Um, Dr. Elizabeth Wright recommends a stick of butter a day. And so does Stephanie Keto. Hmm. A know. stick of butter a day. Yeah, a stick of butter a day. Huh. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, I think that people should eat until so if they if it if their if their body's asking for it, they'll let them know. If I ate a stick of butter, I'd run to the bathroom, so my body would tell me right. nope. Right. That's the thing is, so if you're running to the bathroom, you're eating too much, and if you're not going at all, uh, which there's a difference between not going and being constipated too. But if you're not going at all, then you may not be eating enough fat or butter. Yep. Or if you're hungrier or if you're yeah. um, feeling low energy, then you might not be eating enough. And then, or if you're eating too yeah. much, you might feel nausea, you might have stomach pain. So right. you don't necessarily have to be diarrheating or not, but. Right. Yeah. Um, so then uh, Terry Prince says, I'm 67, been a dieter all my life, started carnivore September 12th, um, lost six pounds and have not lost anything since. Yeah. I mean, if we need to know more information, are you on any medications? Yeah. Um, yeah. What was, how long ha were you eating a standard American diet? What are you currently eating? Um, mm -hmm. What time do you wake up? What's your stress level? What to, how much sleep are you getting? True. It's true. And, and I can say um, that for me, I went back and looked not long ago. I have one of those digital scales that sends it to your phone, you know? And I went back and looked recently, and I did actually lose two or three pounds at the very beginning of carnivore before I started gaining. And so I wonder if it's that kind of a situation because um, I did lose a couple of pounds or maybe three and then started gaining because I was under eating. So I wonder if it could be something like that. Like maybe you're too full, so you don't realize that you need more and that's why you can't lose weight because you're technically probably under eating. Yeah, I mean, first guess is always under eating. So I would think yeah. like initially when someone's gonna lose, initially someone I would think would lose weight because they're removing the processed foods. Right. And then they're eating whole foods, their body's like sweet, I'm gonna yeah. lose some of the weight because I'm less inflamed. Or it's just uh, yeah. water weight from right. carbohydrates. Yep. Yeah. 
And then um, Ricky Graves says, some cannot digest large amounts of meat. And that's true, but you could probably work your way up slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then one more, um, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, best way to transition to carnivore. What do you usually tell people? Slowly, gradually. I did not yep. say rip it off like a Band-Aid. Yeah, me too. That's what I tell people. I tell people do a week of low carb vegetables, no processed foods and your meat and fats. And then do a week of like just some blueberries, like, you know, like just have some blueberries on hand. Blueberries is always my go-to for people. Keep some blueberries on hand, eat a handful here and there when you need it um, and see how you're feeling because the carb withdrawals are real. I mean, that's a serious thing. Um, and by week three or four, I think people can completely transition. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that, that could definitely work. I personally transitioned for like six months. So like, I right. think that it's for like myself, like that's why I feel like a, I, mean, I didn't have a binge eating history before, but I do think right. that I, if I only had done it for a week, having yeah. something else, I wouldn't be able to just have that something else. Whereas I was eating a low carb diet for three, four, five months before yeah. I then moved to keto. And then it yeah. was more doable because I'm just removing the potato or something. And then right. it's like, okay, now I'm just removing the cauliflower, but I'm still eating the broccoli, the asparagus, the Brussels sprouts. Now I'm going to remove just the Brussels sprouts. And it's just like really, oh, yeah. really gradually because then it's mentally just like, I'm just not having this one food first. Like, right. Yeah. That's so interesting. Cause you're not an all or nothing person. person yeah, I am. And I transitioned in, you know, 24 hours. I was like, okay, I'm going from cupcakes to beef. Yep. You know, like, so that's so funny how your personality mm -hmm. really does it. But ultimately you just have to make the decision. Like Dr. Chafee says, just rip off the band-aid, just do it. Um, but I know that that is very daunting for people. And I'm not saying people can't do it like that. I did. But um, I do think for a lot of people, there needs to be a transition, whatever that is. And I guess it kind of depends on what the goal is and what the ailments are that we're trying to heal. It depends on how dire the situation is. Right. Well, yeah. people will say like, oh, how, like, they'll ask me, Lily, how was your transition? Was it rough? Did you have diarrhea? Did you have uh, low energy. Did you have keto flu? I'm like, no, because I you know, just, it was so gradual. I didn't even know it was happening. Yeah. That's really interesting. Isn't it? How everybody is so different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think we got to most of the questions. So I think that's good for now. We'll do this again someday. Yes. This yeah. Is great. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me. I think it was really great. We got a lot of good questions and because we both talked fast, we covered a lot of ground really quickly. <laughs> I know. I try to purposely slow myself down in the videos. Otherwise, I could talk faster. If you really wanted me to talk faster, I really could. And I even on YouTube, when I'm listening to videos, I actually speed it up to two times speed because everybody else talked really slow for me. But otherwise, I try to slow down for everybody else. <laughs> so funny because I am the same way. I actually used to be a, a radio disc jockey. And my <sighs> biggest problem was that I would talk too fast. The program director would always come in and be like, slow down. Awesome. Yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah, I have so many words in here. I have to get out. <laughs> yeah, when I'm filming my videos, I'll like look back and be like, oh, people are not going to understand what I'm saying, <laughs> even though I do. Right. Yeah, that's so funny. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we could just keep talking, but we better not. <laughs> well, have a good rest of your night. I'm going to go and eat some beef and some butter right now. Awesome. Go for it. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. Bye, guys.